What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moneyline Media. Hope you guys are all having a great day, week, month, century, millennium. You get it. Welcome back. We have a big interview for you guys tonight. In just a moment, we're going to be joined by Micah Awe. He is a returning... Returning. ...interviewee. Yep. We have uh, we interviewed him at the very beginning of this podcast. We're excited to have him back. He's currently a member of the Ottawa Red Blacks. He's played all over the place. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the BC Lions, the Jets, the Toronto Argonauts, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He and hits now, like a Mack truck. He did. He almost separated Carson Wentz in half. Was that the uh, downfall of Carson Wentz? I, I maybe maybe it's all Micah's fault. All right, let's let him in. <laughs> What's going on, Micah? Hey, y'all. How you doing? Back. What's going on, man? How's everything? Good. How are y'all? Doing well. <clears throat> thank y'all for inviting me back on. Oh, we're excited to have you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Newest member of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Yep, are you, yep. Are you excited to be back in the red and black jerseys? I am. I, I've been <laughs> in red and black a couple of times in my career. This was one I remember yeah. the last time we had you on the show, we asked you which uh, color scheme was your favorite, and you said that it was the Texas Tech red and black jerseys that you had there. So Exactly. Similar so, jerseys. Back, back, yeah, more jerseys back in the red and black. It can't – nothing can go wrong now. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> by the way, on the recent signing. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. So I got to ask you, uh, red blacks last year or last season, the last season you guys played – yeah, weren't that weren't that hot though? They've made a lot of really big moves. Do you do you think they have a chance for them to go to worst to first? Oh, for sure. First off, not not from just my standpoint, but just from a CFL standpoint, that happens all the time. Yeah. Like at the CFL, it's not like NFL where sometimes you need to build for years and years. I mean, Toronto did it last in 2017. They were definitely they were the worst team during the season. And then win the Grey Cup. Oh wow! So, yeah, I remember that because my first year when I was the BC Lions, the first game we played against them, I mean, we came in there like we're about to spank them, and we did. It was they were very easy, nothing, no big deal. But by the end of the year, I mean, they were just like a machine. They were still, I mean, I didn't think they were all that great, but they just won. It was just like they got it. Um, so I, that's um, and but really. When I was looking at it, because I had, I had a couple offers everywhere, you know. Obviously, cause, I mean, luckily, and um, really, what it came down to me was um, the the defense on Ottawa. I mean, part of your rebuild, which is not getting a lot of hype. I mean, whatever about Toronto, don't, don't really care right now. Could, could care. <laughs> but um, if you really look at the defense, I mean, Cleon Lang, I mean, he's a legit beast. Went to Iowa State. I played with him in Toronto and realized why he was so good. Um, then they got um, Davon Coleman, which I played with him at BC. He was an all-star, got like 15 sacks as a D tackle. So, I mean, you're talking about two defensive tackles that are like, I'm not going to say the Aaron Donalds of the CFL, but basically the Aaron Donalds of the CFL playing D tackle. Um, and those are two guys I played with. And you got Don Unamba, which I've always watched him since I've been in the league. And then Abdul Kane, which I play with at Toronto, which is amazing at defensive back. And he's a huge veteran leader that will say whatever he needs to say to get make sure that everyone's doing their job. So, and then the defensive coordinator, Mike Benavidez, I mean, he coached Solly and um, Big Hill when they were the all-star and defensive, not defensive, MOP of the whole league. Awesome. Um, and now I'm next to um, A.B. Rollinson which is a, another great linebacker. And people are underrating him, too, because just like me, he got hurt last year. So it's kind of like – or the last season. So everyone's kind of just not even talking about us, which is fine. But when you look at the paper, it's definitely a team that could do major, major da damage. For well, sure. Yeah. So last year, you guys' season did get canceled because of COVID-19. How excited are you to get back on the football field this year? Man, it's been boiling up in me like a kettle. I mean, it <laughs> like, you know, last year, um, last year was a, I mean, other than a lot of people, you know, going through a lot of heartache, 
like, I mean, I, my heart goes out for everyone who lost someone or got really sick. But I mean, there is a silver lining and the silver lining for me personally was I was able to take a break off of football since seventh grade. It's been over a decade since yeah. I had yeah. any kind of break from football. And um, especially for me, it was a blessing because I was coming off a surgery year. So like who who gets like a year where everyone gets a year off? And you get off. <laughs> right, right. So to me, it was like, it was like, it was, yeah, I didn't have a season, but I mean, I was telling someone the other day, I've only played really like two full professional seasons since I graduated college, just because, you know, the first year it didn't count because Tampa Bay, I mean, I had one practice squad, one week of practice squad, which, and after that, I didn't play the whole season. So that's a year. And then I went to BC, played a whole year. And then the next year I signed with the Jets, but then got cut on the third day of the draft. And then I only played half a CFL season. And then Toronto, I only played half a CFL season. And then I got hurt. So that, that's just two years. Right. So I'm really young. I'm 24 in football year. So I, I haven't even like hit any potential, but I'm called a veteran. And it, it sounds weird. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm the rookie end of vet right now. <laughs> So what has this year been like for you going through all this COVID-19 stuff? How have you been dealing with it? Everybody fine? Your family? How's everything going for you? Yeah, my first, my family's fine. My girlfriend's family's fine. Like, I, we've been really lucky and um, surprised. Well, surprisingly, a couple of weeks ago, I actually got COVID, but oh. had no idea. The only reason why I had idea is because my girlfriend started showing symptoms. Gotcha. She got it or she tested, she got in and I got, I tested and then I had it, but all I had was like, at the most was a runny nose. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, when I realized I was like, I can see why, I mean, if she didn't get tested, I probably would have kept on going to the gym right, and doing things regular. So I can see why it's spreading so much. Cause for some people like me, it, you can't, I didn't know. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully it hits people more like me than anyone else. Like that's why I hope, you know, but I know it doesn't. So but the, with the vaccines and everything, it's going good. Um, and then to further answer your question, I, I've actually, I feel like I'm, I'm lucky because um, two and a half years ago, I actually came up with this concept of idea for an app. And um, shift. since, yeah, it's a purple shift. Yeah. And then, since, about it, yep. yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know if I, when we talked, I think I was still working on it. Yep. You were. yep. Okay. Well, it. <laughs> I actually officially came out with it. Um, it awesome. It's in the, yeah, it's in the app stores officially from like January, so it's it's I'm not it's done. Still needs improvement, of course, but it's done and it's ready for you know commercial use and it's in the app store right now. So if you uh, go to your app store and put in Purple Shift, you can download it. You awesome. know right. Um yeah, and I actually made my first pair of uh, merchandise yesterday. Oh sick! Which, yeah, I'll show y'all. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, we gotta see this. Yeah. So it's just a little. Oh, that's truck. sick. Sweet. Yeah. It has like a little P with the purple ship. Can y'all see? Yeah. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. And then these shorts, same concept, just a P. Love and then, uh, yeah. So hopefully people start seeing the P and asking questions. Like, what's, well, what's that? For and sure. then Congratulations. On the, now, I remember that when you were explaining it to us, it was basically based for athletes to show their 40s and. Uh, scout themselves right now for us would we be able to download this app and see other people's posts like see what they're doing and stuff like yeah that? i'm i'm like so so i explained it to y'all last time and i, I explained the recruiting base right. To right. yes yeah just because football people but now the second time really the way i'm going to explain to you is that not only can you download the app it's free to use and you can see other people's posts mm -hmm. but there's actually a way if you're not trying to get recruited i actually made it for people who aren't trying to get recruited and this really stems from <laughs> solly because i told S solomon aluminium about it about two years ago in a parking lot and his first question he's he's super smart guy super smart business guy as y'all can tell yeah. his first question was like cool micah it's cool that you have it for you know athletes and recruiters but what about for the everyday people that's yeah. really how big app and so i i actually have that to where um Yes, you can get tested for the 40, 30, broad jump, vertical, and all that. But you can also get tested for what I call our challenges. So there's um, air squat challenge, sit-up challenge, and push-up challenge. 
Oh, that's and, sick. Wow. Yeah. And all these challenges, it's it's not like a workout plan. It's literally, it's more like a benchmark if you think about it that way. So right. it's these are three minute challenges and it's how many you can do in three minutes. James, so, I think uh, I think this might be some content for us. I think that we oh, might I have think, to I, think, I think we might have to do a challenge. Purple shift challenge is definitely happening with the Moneyline Media team. <laughs> oh no, I I so it's 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 actually Okay, the way I envision it, because, like, I think you'll have a great podcast. It's, like, you can have, like, weekly, I don't know, like, um, so-and-so from, you know, your fan base is number yeah. one in our – because if you get ranked is number one this week, and they're the, they're the premier athlete of the week. And then you oh, can show cool. a video of them doing the push-ups or whatever. Oh, James, um, you know who would love that? The Tides. I think we yeah, got to get the Tides on that because they're very – so we, we've been doing a, like a baseball, this little baseball team near us, and, and they are so competitive with each other. So I think oh, wow. it would actually uh, be really good for them too. Well, yeah, they, you tell them to get on and then they can make a team actually. And um, I told you all about the – It's I told you about the athletic status as well. I'll explain it again. So, like, you know, on Instagram and Facebook, you have, like, check marks. You know, Twitter, right. you got the check Verified, yep. So, our check mark is called your athletic status. And it basically, you know, you get that purple shift score and you get that raw result score. So, you know, the purple shift score includes your height, weight, and your gender. And then it, it gives you a score. It pushes you out of score. So, based on that score, you get athletic status. So, it's, you know, I created the algorithm or whatever, but if you're from like X to, you know, Z or A to B on your purple shift score, you can be anything from an elite athlete all the way to a couch potato. And <laughs> Love it. That, That's this, definitely going to be us, James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, so, and then when you, when you join a team, you can make a team so that the tides can make a team and anytime they claim their team for their verification, it goes underneath that team's umbrella. And so then you become elite athletes or couch potato because yeah. oh, it takes oh, average awesome. all that. So it's something I know that, you know, right now it's definitely the beginning of everything, but like I, I definitely build it for like when you have thousands of people using it, your cousins are using, your family's using right. it, it's fun and it's not really working out. It's just like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like challenging you see, like, like the way I was doing it. So me and my girlfriend went to Hawaii um, a couple weeks ago or a week ago and I just literally just claimed everywhere I could claim so I claimed three spots and like <laughs> some of the spots are on hikes that are four hours long and we got oh, wow. to like the very top of the mountain and I was like I'm claiming this and it's wow. like, almost impossible for me to lose that spot because you gotta you gotta do the four hour hike first true so true. anyways it, it's like supposed to be fun so I, I'm actually really excited I love the recruiting part but once it becomes mainstream, it's going to be super fun. And I'm, I'm hoping that it just encourages people to just sure. stay, stay healthy. You know, and I think it's got to help with the, especially with these high school athletes who, who maybe not be able to get recruited due to the COVID pandemic. Like some people aren't, have you noticed like an uptake in that as well with those uh, schools and stuff using it? Um, so like I said, I just came out with this in January and yeah. I, oh, wow. the worst part about it is no one knows about it yet. So we got to get it out there. But the even the even more worst part is, I mean, I was a high school student and um, my story for my recruiting went just like this. Um, luckily, I had a great high school coach and he told my dad to make sure I go to camp. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, after Nike Spark Combine Camp, Texas Tech Scout shows up in my high school and he says, yeah, one of my buddies who ran the camp, ran the camp said that they might have like an athlete there for you. And then he watched my film. You know, a lot of kids think, you know, I'm a great football player. I was all state. I was all, I'm like, look, to get to the next level, it's really athleticism. Like these D1 coaches are looking for potential. They're looking for the ceiling. Yeah. And then they'll look at the film and that's when you kind of fit. Um, so in a lot of these kids with Corona, they don't, I mean, they're not really realizing it, but they go on Twitter and they put their highlights there and, they hope a coach sees it. And it's just hope. It's a whole bunch of hope. Right. And for me, Purple Ship could be like a guarantee. And um, I'm talking with some organizations right now, which I'm, I'm not going to name right you now. Gotcha. I'm, hoping, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping it works out. And if it works out, we'll definitely be back on the podcast. Oh, talking. yeah, for sure. Whoa. But um, hopefully what, what happens is, you know, 
it basically kind of becomes like Hunger Games ish, where you know if you're top ten and forty, top ten and bra, top ten in all these tests, it's an automatic invite to this combine. Oh sweet! You know, because because that way you're you know it's good for the it's good for the players because you know your goal. You know, right. if I'm top and I'm gonna get in automatically. There's no luck involved. It's just I need to get this done. And then for the combine people, it's also really great because you filtered out everyone from the weeds. You're getting the top 10 athletes, period. Right. And now you can have a combine where you know these are the top 10 guys. These are the best athletes. Um, so it, it's a win-win situation for Corona because on top of that, you don't have to – this app works basically remotely. <laughs> you can yeah. be in the world and do it on the field by yourself and not have to mess with anyone. So it's, it's COVID friendly. That's what I would call it. That's awesome. Michael, did you design this app yourself? Yes, I did. So since February of last year, when the CFO was kind of iffy about going and I started realizing how serious the COVID thing was, I mean, I was like, you know, at the very least, the CFL season is going to start later. So I got a head start on it. I mean, I've been working like 16 hour days like for for an entire year <laughs> till January until I finished it to where I got it. Um, but um, again, one of my biggest motivators was like, I'm lucky because I have a reputation. So my athletic skills kind of like feed me, but there's kids in college and high school, like my little brother, he goes to Rice University and he barely got into Rice University. And I just, and I, I think he could have went to a power five for sure but sometimes it's just a matter of opportunity and luck i'm trying to get luck out of sports it should just be (laughs) who's the best and then everyone knows hey these people on the field or on the ice are the best athletes we know that for the fact because we we did that but hopefully purple shift changes that culture yeah i mean that's such a great idea too Uh, and i know like it's really these kids getting recruited it's like you you kind of have to have you know, my, my my girlfriend's brother, I almost said my future brother-in-law, not yet, but uh, <laughs> he, he's a he's a uh, high school coach of a, of a team mm-hmm. here in Jersey. And I think it would definitely help those kids just to, to even be looked at by schools that they might not even think be, you know, might not even think about, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I'm, it, it also evens the playing ground because oh, um, sure. these big D1 colleges, I mean, I know all about it. This is why I'm I was lucky to be able to make this app because I know all about it. Like big D one college, they'll, they'll spend money to go to hell and high water to go recruit a kid. But <laughs> that you know, diamond in the rough. Yeah. But then, you know, smaller schools, they, there's a lot of kids who could definitely play D one, D three that just never do because the smaller schools don't even find them themselves because they only have like two cents to work with compared to these huge yeah. D. But now there would be no excuse. I mean, as long as you, the idea is, as long as you're in the beta database, you're going to be seen. Now, the higher you are, the more exposure you get. But it's not because some, you know, you got lucky with media and got viral. It, right. It's because you earned it. It's because you earned it. You, you are number 15 in your region as a linebacker. You're probably going to get recruited. And now every kid knows that growing up. And no one feels bad because it's like, hey, I put my all in and I was 2,500. <laughs> I wasn't that, <laughs> like, a, you know, like at that point, you're just like, oh, well, I hope my film's good enough because, you know, but at least the kid knows and, and they feel better about themselves. And then there's no regrets because it's, you know, you put in your work and and I'm, I'm the number one example of that because people say, oh, you're, you're so athletic. You jump so high. You know, like I killed pro day. Yeah. But I mean, if you would have told me it was the same seventh grader from D team that was going to kill pro day. <laughs> no one be like, no, no, he, he's not athletic. You know, he's not, I'm like, no, you can earn it. You just got to work really, really hard right. to get the point. Mm-hmm. So Mike, and now I got to, the app sounds awesome, but now I got to bother you a little bit more about the CFL season. Is mm-hmm. there a team that you're most looking forward to going against? Toronto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you know, for me, it, it's it's all the teams. I mean, um, there weren't many teams who didn't call me free agency. It was just a matter of uh, who really wanted me. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I have it, it's just 
I don't know, it's kind of in me that I can take any little thing and I'm going to definitely hold on to it. Um, Cause you know, I, I, I'm, I have nothing against any players, but you know, guys like Cam judge, when I see him, the high, he's like the highest play linebacker. And I'm like, Oh, I'm definitely going to outplay him. That's just my mindset. Um, That's so that mentality. Yeah. And, and so for me, it's just like, when we play these teams, I'm like, I'm going to make sure at the end of the day, at the end of the game, they're going to say my name may, way more than your guy. And I know how GMs are. I know how coaches are. They're like, dang, I love that kid. And I'm going to make sure they feel that. So for me, it's every team is going to get the same equally, you know, equal punishment for all because uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Awesome. Now, now, be honest, Micah. You signed with the Red Blacks because you wanted to get back in that color scheme. Yeah, don't lie to us. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have been good if there was a team up there with purple. Then it would go perfect with the purple shift. That's. You know, you know, one day, one day, maybe I'll have an NFL or a CFL extension team, and um, we'll be the purple, the purple Raiders, with a P. Now, listen, so, you, gotta, you gotta consider us for color commentary. Yeah, you do, you do oh, for oh, sure. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure. I, I'll make sure. I'll, I'll remember and be like, oh, there's, there's that podcast that's huge now. Oh, I know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I gotta what ask. Have you been doing oh. to prepare? She's always trying to cut me off. Man. Sorry, go ahead, James. <laughs> I, I, it's, what it's, have you been doing to prepare for the season? I know with COVID nineteen, gym closures have been tough and everything. So, what have you been doing to get ready to keep yourself in shape? Yeah, so I started getting back in the gym. And um, for me, it's like this whole year has kind of been like a reset, like ment mentally and physically. And um, last year, I mean, even before I got hurt, I was having a great season. It was probably one of my best seasons I've had. But surprisingly, I mean, I was actually hurt, not even like with the peg. I was hurt before that like running wise, I wasn't my fastest. I wasn't my quickest. Yeah. I was making all these plays. So I think obviously mentally I was getting smarter and getting better, getting used to the CFL game. But honestly, I don't think I played that well. Like if you ask me, there was a lot of plays out there where I was like, dang, like if that was really where I wanted to be, I wouldn't be there. So this year I've been really focusing on like getting my, like just going back to the basics of what got Mike all way to, to get his opportunity, which is speed, you know, I've gotten bigger naturally. I'm about 225, 230 now mm. without trying to eat or anything, just my natural weight. And um, But for me, I'm just trying to get super explosive, super fast again. And, you know, I'm quick twitch. So I actually, <laughs> I've been training with, uh, there's a quarterbacks and receivers coach up here. Um, it's called Connection Training. And he, I was actually talking to him about purple shift, but I saw what he, you know, the drills he does with his quarterbacks and receivers. And um. I do it on Mondays and Wednesdays now with them. So I'm doing receiver you're getting, drills. You're getting into the mind of them. That's what's happening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and I know how they move. I know why they move. I know. So, and he was a, co he was a, he was a quarterback in, in college. And um, he's been a quarterback coach for, you know, the past decade. So he's telling me things that I've never even knew about. Um, so I'm learning things from him just from that standpoint. And then athletically, I mean, these receivers, they run a lot. Like linebackers run, but obviously we, we run a lot, but yeah, <laughs> receivers run a lot. I'm I cannot <laughs> emphasize that anymore. I remember in college we had like GPS trackers um at one point. And I think I ran like not ran, sprinted like forty five hundred uh either like yards worth of sprinting in my practice. But then our receivers at Texas Tech, which is no huddle, you know, offense receiver. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Bradley Marquez was one of our receivers, and he ran 11,000 yards in the same practice I ran. Wow! So for me, if I can remove, if I can move like a receiver, oh, I yeah. mean, there's I'm already like a coverage linebacker. I can cover almost every running back slot receiver. But now I'm like, you know, if I actually get the footwork like they do and the movements and catching, catching's huge because we get interceptions. Yep. Absolutely. I'm like, there's really nowhere. I, I mean, this is exactly where I want to be. It's doing receivers co um, kind of like movements. And he does give me like some DB drills. And then every once mm -hmm. in a while, when I'm done catching, I'll play defense on on these uh, other athletes and um, work on my, my craft as well. So it, it's really just where I'm trying to get back to. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where I am athletically come training camp. 
Love it. We spoke to um, a couple players on the Red Blacks. Yep. And just throughout the, the league in general, uh, CFL or NFL or even college, and we've heard some very strange workout routines. Oh, yeah. Going through COVID-19. We had one guy that worked out with a tree. Your teammate, uh, Jacob Zott, was working out with construction gear, like cinder blocks and stuff. Wow. He's a monster. Yeah. He is yeah. a monster. You'll be you'll be going up against him in practice. He's an old lineman. Oh yeah, that's good. That's what you want to hear from old lineman. Yeah. Old lineman work on trees, hit, hitting hitting trees with their bare bare knuckles. <laughs> oh yeah, he could. He definitely could. I gotta ask you, CFL and XFL kind of going into you know chats about potentially going into business together. How do you feel about that? Uh, it, like it's it's all rumors, except for one thing I've noticed is professional athlete. Rumors are like 80, 80 plus percent true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, literally, I'm like, you know, because it's been like four years and especially with Corona, I've been just tallying into my head. I'm like, all right, this came out this week, a couple months later, true. I'm like, okay, all right, this came out this week, a couple months later, true. Um, But, you know, where there's smoke, there's there's probably fire. And um, to me, first, all I want is like the best for the league. Um, I think... I think in general the CFL gets looked down on right. from a lot of from from basically everyone who's not in it because mm -hmm. they don't know. Um, my first ever, the first time I ever even knew the CFL existed. I'm talking about existed. I never even heard a CFL in that sequence until my hit after I hit Carson Wentz. Yes, and my agent calls me and says, "You hey, knocked him. You knocked him to Indianapolis." <laughs> <laughs> that's good job um well wow, he is in the effort. anyway i think he's gonna do better there um anyways um he when when i hit him my agent calls me the next morning and was like yeah two cfl teams you know hit me up blah 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 i'm like cfl what, what is that canadian football league i was like oh okay yeah mm -hmm. and, and moved on but um that ended up being my saving grace. I mean, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to continue to play football. And then I tell people the story. I already told you all the story about my first kickoff. Yep. Down there, I'm like, this is a way better league. But the issue is, it's like people just don't know what they don't know. Right. And right. how can get exposure is the right thing to do. I mean, people forget the NFL was once two separate leagues. The right. AFL, the NFL. And they both have great leagues, but now they're the NFL, and it is what it is. And for me, I think the best game plan we can take from as a as football in general is the soccer game plan. I mean, soccer. The reason why it's so big is yes, it's an easy sport to pick up and go. I give give them that, but also because everything is so interchangeable around the world. Mm -hmm. Mexico plays the same way as Europe. Europe plays the same way as Brazil. And I think the reason why that's so good is because a, a guy from a lower league will make it to the European league or the German league, and then they'll bring all their fans with them. I mean, basically, like, a whole country with them and say, like, oh, my gosh, this guy used to play in our backyard. So, for me, it's like if we can somehow create that because football is way more entertaining than soccer, way more. Like, my, my family did not know about football coming from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. remember – first ever my first ever memory of football was sometime in like 1997 it was on tv on a saturday morning i was looking for my freaking cartoons and i watched <laughs> like two minutes i'm like and it was like all blurry you know like the 20 hd and they had big shoulder i was like this is what's no where where's tom and jerry yeah um, so but but once we got into it I mean, my mom is the biggest football. Like, she, know, she knows first down. She knows everything. And it's, like, way more than soccer. So, um, I just hope that whatever comes out of it, it well, I just – I'm a big believer of this. It's going to turn out for the better. Whatever happens is going to turn out for the better. Whether nothing happens or something happens, it's going to be for the better. But um, either way, it's getting to CFL exposure right now. So, all media is good media. Absolutely. <laughs> That's true. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. Micah, thanks again for joining us. We can't wait to have you back on, talk some more Purple Shift. And, of course, your season coming up in the CFL and to see everything that you're uh, going to do up there. We can't wait, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and y'all y'all don't don't forget to download Purple Shift and do a challenge. Yes. Oh, oh we will.
<laughs> yeah, let me know if y'all know. We we'll definitely will. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. Stay All safe. Right. Stay well, buddy. Thank you. Y'all too. Bye. Mike Allway, always a great guest. Absolutely, absolutely. Founder of Purple Shift. Dude, I can't wait to download it. It's I know, crazy. I know. I'm going to go through it in like five minutes. <laughs> um, great great guy. Um, look out for him in Ottawa this year. We have a few guys on Ottawa now. We got a bunch bunch of guys yeah. on Ottawa. Uh, obviously, we're super pumped for all of them. It's going to be exciting. I mean, we got a, we got a bunch of CFL guys that, that are friends of the show that we can't yeah. wait for to see. Uh, you know what, though, James? There's just something I got to say. Uh, after I do my first workout with Purple Shift, I think I got to, go. you know, get myself down with a uh, misguided spirit. And I don't know if I'm going to do the vodka or the whiskey, but the misguided spirits has the best liquor. And I know you know because you've had a bunch um, of the of the whiskey. And the whiskey is – I'm a big whiskey guy. And you love the misguided. So definitely – after you do your first, Spirits, baby. after you do your first purple shift uh, workout, go get yourself a nice drink for your hard work. And uh, the only way to drink it is misguided spirits for sure. Absolutely, grab myself my misguided whiskey. You know I'm going whiskey, so I know you're going whiskey, and uh, I'll probably do a little bit. I gotta do a mix, probably a little bit of a sprite and some vodka. There you go. Keep it classy. Keep it classy. You know. Love it. All right. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay hydrated.